Hi, uh, welcome. Um, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, my name is Sarah, and I'm joined by Aaron and Emma on my right, and Jenna and Briella here with me on the left. OK, so our project basically looked at peer-to-peer -peer education on campus. So what is peer-to-peer -peer education? Well, this poked at us a good bit during our project because there's a range of ways it can be defined. We figured out that peer-to-peer -peer education is really exactly what it sounds like. It's learning for students by students. And this is majorly led through social interactions between students where students are able to share knowledge and information with each other. And this is largely through activities, events, or even in day-to-day -day interactions with each other. Students serve as role models, mentors, and resources for other students through peer-to-peer. -peer. And this is really great because it can allow students to create really meaningful relationships and increase students' um, confidence in knowledge that they're talking about with other students. Um, and through this, they're able to collaborate to reach certain goals, and they can also complete activities with an increase of confidence and ultimately creating meaningful relationships with each other. Our, <clears throat> sorry. Our peer to peer gradient demonstrates that peer education can look very different, especially depending on the context in which it is created and taught. <clears throat> sorry, it's the morning. <laughs> on the far left hand side of the gradient, we have the Sustainability Fellowship, which demonstrates that some kinds of peer education occurs in a more uh, formal administrative based structure. Students work with other students, but the program itself is entirely organized and run by a specific administration or department. In this case, it's the Sustainability Institute. On the far right-hand side of the gradient, we have the Organic Gardening Club, which shows that other kinds of peer education can occur in a more informal, entirely student-based structure. And everything in between shows that other kinds of peer education can have a mix of more formal administrative-based support or more informal student-run activities. Our project scope just gives an overview of our project as a whole. So we explored what peer education is in order to better understand what it looks like and what its main characteristics are. We also looked at how peer education can be used as an effective learning tool and how it functions within the field of sustainability. And our overall goal was to strengthen the case for peer-to-peer -peer sustainability education at the University of New Hampshire to demonstrate that peer education can be used to promote sustainable efforts and causes. So there are a lot of existing peer-to-peer -peer programs here at UNH. And as Emma showed in the peer-to-peer -peer gradient, there's really a no one-size-fits-all identification for peer-to-peer. -peer. So we took a very broad look and considered everything that we considered to be peer-to-peer -peer at UNH and then organized them into six distinct categories. We include the Sustainability Institute, Paul College, Early Arrival Programs, um, student wellness and housing and res, res life. But to preface, even though it looks very organized in a beautiful diagram, peer-to-peer <laughs> -peer programming at UNH can be very complex and interconnected. As we're trying to sh display on our diagram to the left, the current existing structure is quite departmentalized. So each program is running directly from a siloed department. What we found through our research is we need a more transdisciplinary approach to be more sustainable. We need more cross communication and collaboration, which Erin will talk about in the diagram to the left. So as you can see on the right, we did create a visual to try and represent how important it is to increase communication across departments. Um, as you can see at the top, the Sustainability Institute, we do have as like the head of sustainable initiatives, but we are encouraging all departments and all silos to foster a more communicative and inclusive environment. UNH really would benefit from sustainability initiatives because sustainability itself is a transdisciplinary subject, so it's in the best interest of our community. In addition to looking into the existing peer-to-peer -peer programs that we have here at UNH and all the background knowledge that we gained, we also wanted to take a look at what other institutions similar to our own um, are doing when it comes for, uh, to peer-to-peer. -peer. So to do this, we know that UNH really values their Platinum Stars rankings, so we thought it would be appropriate to also use um, look at institutions who are using this reporting tool. To do this, we use the content display feature that's on the ASHU Stars website where we were able to filter it down and find schools who also scored a perfect four out of four for the EN1 credit. In case you don't know, the EN1 credit is the peer-to-peer -peer sustainability education credit, and that's the credit that um, all of these programs would be reported and fall under. 
So we chose to look at uh, other schools that also had a perfect EN1 credit because we are very proud to say that we do here at UNH. Um, and then we came up with 15 schools that we wanted to filter a little bit down. Um, and so we took out about eight institutions who are significantly smaller than ours in size because they probably have peer-to-peer -peer programs um, that would be almost impossible to scale up to a university of our capacity. The second approach that we took was interviewing our faculty um, that are involved in a lot of these peer-to-peer -peer programs and see if they had maybe any recommendations for ways, again, that we can improve what we already have um, or for new programs in areas that they see gaps in our existing education. So we interviewed Jade Chalkley. She's the peer-to-peer -peer coordinator for the Sustainability Institute. Faina Bucher, who is the um, a program coordinator for the Changemaker Collaborative, sorry, and then Todd Sweet, who is the UNH executive chef. So utilizing the STARS rating, we also went in and did research on schools with a perfect student engagement score for some of their programs. So a couple that we would like to highlight, the DECAL program at Berkeley is a program where students are able to develop and run their own courses with a facilitator. So these courses range from mindfulness, med mindfulness meditation to Taiwanese language to human-centered design and everything in between. This is a perfect example of peers teaching peers. There are also two programs at Emory that also received that perfect STARS student engagement rating. The first one is the Resident Hall Sustainability Chairs, where peers will advocate about sustainability topics in their res halls and also teach students about how to live sustainably on campus. Um, this is also very similar to the Sustainability Advocates program that we have at UNH. And we also have the Zero Waste Ambassador program at Emory. Students conduct waste audits, sort through trash and recycling, but then also they educate their students on zero waste initiatives around campus. Another university with unique peer-to-peer -peer opportunities is Cornell University. So the two that I wanted to highlight here, the first is Annabelle's Grocery, which is a completely student-run grocery store that sells food at um, reduced prices. This is run annually by 30 students who are trained for over 40 hours on how to run the store. It is available to all students on their campus to shop in. And the second program I wanted to highlight is Dilham Farm, which is again a student-run farm. This is actually really cool because it not only serves the student community, but it also serves the community that Cornell um, resides in. So this is also run completely by students. It's run by 20 students. And a really fun fact that I thought about, thought about this farm is that it's open 48 out of 52 weeks in a year. So it's not something that is just available during the academic school year. So after all this research, we've come to the conclusion that collaboration and communication at UNH is currently not as effective as it could be. And this not only inhibits us from engaging the community the way we want to be and integrating sustainability into all students' lives, but it's also really hard for us to improve and build on existing peer-to-peer -peer if we don't have the basics covered. Um, we also think it's really important to possibly create a sustainability education system here at UNH, perhaps adding a position to the student senate or a sustainability committee that would be a central student-led group that could communicate needs um, and potential within the university. And having this as a part of the student senate will really help encourage UNH to expand peer-to-peer -peer education. Another result we found is that student and faculty fatigue is at a really high point. I'm sure everyone can agree that after the pandemic, the remote learning was really a large stressor on everyone. Um, so. As a result, we need more easily accessible engagement opportunities because once this happened, a lot of students had a lot of burnout. Um, there was not a lot of voluntary um, engagement with sustainable opportunities and programs on campus. So we were thinking maybe we can make sustainability, sustainability more inherent in existing programs. Um, looking at that graph, you know, there are so many programs right now that are at our fingertips that we can incorporate really great programs into and create this peer-to-peer -peer education without thinking that we need to create new things. Um, we could really improve our existing programs here on campus. And that leaves us with our presentation. Thank you. Thank you.